Hello, uh, my name is Adam McSkelly. I am a traditional leather worker. I run McSkelly Leathers and have been working in leather for over 10 years now. Uh, the main things I make are costume pieces, uh, personal commissions and uh, replicas of historical items. So today I'm going to take you through uh, 10 steps on how to get into leather working. I'm going to be showing you some old fashioned techniques, some modern techniques and uh, on the table here I've got one of the objects I've made and um, because today I'm going to be making a pouch to show you how to use all these techniques so here's an example of one of the pouches I've made earlier. So if you'd like to follow along at home you'll need the following tools. So firstly we have a hardboard cutting mat then we have a hard surface to work on in this case we have an anvil but you can use other objects. Next you'll need a knife an adjustable stitch groover, a fixed stitch groover, a number two edge bevel, a number six English pricking iron, a swivel knife, an embossing chisel, an embossing dot tool, a slot punch, a strap end cutter, a hole punch, a nylon cutting board, an adjustable strap cutter, needle and thread, a wooden mallet, a hammer, a metal ruler, a polishing brush, and last but not least, a pencil. So let's move on. Hi everyone, so this is step one. And step one is choosing the kind of leather you want to use. So the pouch I showed you earlier is actually made of two different types of leather. It's made of uh, vegetable tanned leather, which is traditional leather. It's been made for thousands of years and you can use it for making all kinds of things. The second type of leather is what's known as chrome tan leather. This has been around since the Victorian period and it's all to do with how the skin is treated to turn it into leather. So the reason I use these two different types is because they are very good at different things. So vegetable tanned leather uh, firstly is more expensive but you can do more things with it so you can mold it, you can carve it, you can change it into shapes, you can dye it, whereas chrome tanned leather, this stuff right here, is typically already dyed um, and it has a kind of a plastic painted finish on it. So this is the colour it will be, uh, whereas this colour here, you can dye to whatever colour you want, you can paint it, all that kind of thing. Um, these levers also come in various thicknesses, so you'll see this is very flexible, whereas this is a little bit more rigid. So the veg tan lever I have today is three millimetres thick, whereas the chrome tan lever I have is I think about 1.5 to 2 millimetres. And you can find this online, there are plenty of suppliers of leather, so if you type it into Google I'm sure you'll find numerous uh, leather suppliers and uh, they should be able to help you out if you ring them up. Uh, especially in the UK, you'll be able to get uh, samples from your uh, leather suppliers. They'll send you out small bits so you can work out, is this the colour I want, is this the thickness, and then you can get a feel for it to see if it's uh, right for the kind of project you're going to use. So uh, that's an introduction to the two types of leather. Um, so we're going to move on to step two now. So our next step is... Uh, patterns and cutting things out. So on the table today I've got three things. Firstly um, I've got a pencil, I've got a knife and this is just a cheap knife that you can get in uh, most shops. It has a snap-off blade and it locks into place and um, you get these in say packs of ten. And the last thing is I have a cutting board. So my cutting board is actually a piece of hard board and the reason for that is it doesn't have any grain to it. So if you were to cut on a wooden uh, surface like plywood or a pine top, anything like that, the knife, when you come to cut things out, can actually grip inside the grain, which means you your knife slips. And then uh, you'll see here I've got a template. So this is a template I made earlier. It's just a piece of printer paper, which I've drawn a pattern onto, 
and uh, shaped around to work out uh, what my pouch is going to look like. So all I'm going to do is take my pencil and this pencil is slightly blunted so it doesn't have a sharp point on it. The reason for that is if you use a sharp point it will scratch the actual leather itself. And I just line my template up on my leather. So this is the vegetable tanned leather here so it's three mil thick and you take a pencil draw all the way around it and you can make templates out of different things as well so this is a paper one and this is typically what I use but if you're just using templates for the purposes of cutting out you can use things like lino um, because they are the same thickness when you bend them they'll shape in the same way uh, the, the difference is you can't draw your patterns and things on as well. So yeah, I'm just going around the edge here with the pencil and I'm drawing on the flesh side of the leather, not the suede side. So the difference is, is the flesh side is shiny and the suede side is a little bit fuzzy. So there we have our pattern carved on. And the first tool I'm going to show you is uh, a knife. So... Like I said earlier, it's a snap-off blade, it's really cheap, and uh, when these get blunt, you can just take a pair of pliers and snap the end off. They do also sometimes have a thing in the end for uh, snapping them off. So I go out just a little way, maybe like a finger's width, lock it into place, and there is a particular way that I hold knives. So if you are right-handed, you place it in the crook of your hand like this, thumb on this side, index finger on top, and then these two fingers here they're going to sit there and they will sit on the surface and this makes sure that the blade itself is 90 degrees because you don't want to cut under your leather or over your leather so you get a nice 90 degree cut. So if you were to hold it like a pencil, like this, you'll notice that the actual blade sits at an angle which is why I just hold it like that and the little finger I keep out of the way. And I will say if you are leather working it's good to trim down uh, your nails on things like uh, your little finger because sometimes those are the ones that will catch your wise. So cutting board, really important. You don't want to damage your table underneath. I'll put my template to the side for now because I don't need it anymore. And it's just a case of following my lines. So place it on top and you're working your way backwards. And you'll notice that it curves round. So I'm just keeping that at a nice distance. And you can take your time really nice and slow. And I do like to move the pattern round because there are certain angles you cannot get to just with your hand normally. So here we have a close up of how to cut out. Uh, this is the thinner leather. And here's my knife. So, just run it around like this, following my line. And then move around this way. And there we have how to cut things out. So we'll move on to the next step now. So uh, that is the flap of the pouch all uh, cut out. I've cut out, you can see the hole here all the way around the edges. So the next thing to do is make these edges look really neat. So uh, there are a couple of tools I'm going to be using next. The first one is going to be the edge beveler. This is a number two edge beveler, and you can see it's got two little prongs and it's got a little cutting bit there. And then the next one is this one. This is a stitch groover. So the stitch groover is an interesting one because it is made for right-handed, whereas the bevel, it can be used by both left-handed and right-handed people. Uh, so this is an adjustable stitch groover, so you can move this little bit out in and out here and that will change the position of where you put your line around the outside and the final one 
is this one here. So this is a stitch groover that can be used by anyone. And this is, uh, you usually use this one with a ruler, but you can use it by hand as well. So the first tool I'm gonna to show you though, I think is uh, the adjustable stitch groover. So the way you adjust this is uh, it does spin a little bit tight. There we go. And this bit moves in and out. So I'm gonna set this to about there and uh, tighten that bit back up. And I'm gonna run this along this edge here. And what this will do is this will take a small sliver of lever out and uh, make a line where the stitches are going to go. But it'll also mean that the stitches don't wear out over time because they'll sit below the surface of the lever. So if I show you that now, uh, it hold it in one hand, place down, and that little bit that sticks out, that sits on the edge. And then the little L-shaped piece is the bit that cuts. So as you pull that backwards towards you, you can see it removes this little sliver of lever right here. Now these are not good for your hoover, so do it somewhere you can sweep up rather than hoover up. If you look at the lever now, you'll see there is a stitch groove long, uh, running along this edge. And then the next one, you'll see I've done a pencil line across. This is where the top of the pouch is going to fold over and be stitched all the way along here. So I'm going to take a metal ruler and I'm going to take this stitch groover. So this one doesn't have any guide, so instead you use the ruler as the guide. And you place it on top, run it backwards, it does the same thing, removes that little section. And then what we have are two lines where the stitches are going to go. So that's stitch groovers, really useful tools. You can buy these online. I'm going to pop those away now because I'm done with them for now. And then we have uh, this tool right here. So like I said, this is a number two edge beveler and it's got the two prongs and the cutting blade in the middle. And this is used to make this square edge rounded over. So if you put it on the edge there, you can just push. And again, it will remove a small sliver. And what it'll do is just kind of chamfer this edge. So you should be able to see that right there. And I'm gonna use this all the way around this piece. So you want a nice flat surface to work on. You just push all the way around and it just neatens it up. If you've got any pencil marks as well, it will remove them. So we'll speed this up. There we go, nice and neat all the way around the edge. So our next step is carving. And uh, for this you'll need uh, one tool, and uh, it's this tool right here. Uh, this is known as a, a swivel knife. This is the carving edge, and you do hold it in a particular way. So it's got this little kind of saddle on top, and uh, that's where you put your index finger, you put your thumb on the side and you put your middle finger on the other side and it can actually spin and you hold it at this kind of angle so it's a, a kind of 45 degree angle and you work backwards so this is what we're going to be using uh, to carve our patterns in and pattern wise all I've done is I've drawn it on with a pencil so I've got a little guide of uh, how to where my pattern wants to go so the only other thing you'll need is some water this is just ordinary tap water and what I like to do is um, I use warm water so it doesn't uh, affect your hands in any way. It's not like really cold. And what you want to do is cover the whole surface so it's nice and damp. And the reason for this is if you are dyeing it, 
if you don't wet the whole surface, you'll get what's known as a tide mark. So you'll have a little line where the dye doesn't take in the same way as everywhere else. So again, this is a, a swivel knife. I'm going to put my index finger on top. I'm right-handed, but you can use these left-handed as well. So index finger on top, thumb on the left, middle finger on the right. If you're left-handed, it's obviously the other way around. And you can see there's our pattern drawn. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to just trace over those lines. And there we have our first mark, and it's just a case of tracing over all your lines and uh, going all the way around. You can use other objects as well. So here's that piece of level we cut out from this inside bit. So if I wet this, I can show you with, let's see, here's a ruler, for example. This is a metal ruler. It's got a little round edge on here. If you don't have a swivel knife, you can use other objects to make marks. So you can see it's a little bit thicker than the swivel knife but you can use um, all kinds of things you find around the house and you can imprint patterns as well. So this is a close-up of how to use a swivel knife so here is a scrap of leather and remember it's index finger on top, thumb on one side, middle finger on the other and it's this kind of angle so it's a 45 degrees and it's dragging back and you can see me just twisting when I want to do curves. You can also rotate the work as well if you need to. And there we go. So uh, now I've got all these uh, patterns carved in. So this is what I call flat carving. But what we're going to move on to now is like this section right here. So this is what is called embossing. And to do that, there's uh, one tool I use, which is uh, this one right here. So this is an embossing chisel. And it's got a smooth surface and it's a slight angle. And the only other things you'll need is a hard surface. So I'm using my little anvil here, but if you've got like a slab of marble or an old worktop, something like that, that'll work really well as well. And then I've got a wooden mallet. And the way I achieve this effect right here is simply by placing the edge that sticks out the most on our line, taking my mallet, and just gently tapping it round. And all you do is you keep moving it, making sure you've got your hard surface below, but working your way all the way around. So this has been damped as well. It's still damp from carving earlier. If you do find that your lever is drying out though, you can always add more water. But you can see this bit now appears to be raised, but it's actually the background pushed back in. So if I do that on the other side now, show you how that looks. There we go. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to texture this background. And the way I'm going to do that is by using uh, this tool right here. So this is a tool for basically making dots. If I show you on a scrap piece, so I've got my scrap piece from earlier from cutting out and just make sure it's damp enough. And if you take this, give it a little tap, you can see it makes a little dot right there. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to take my dot tool, I'm going to line it up on the edge and I'm tapping it. And it's just a case of filling in all this section. So. I would recommend, when you're doing the dot thing, to first achieve all your chiselling, so all your embossing's done, and then move on to this. So uh, I'm going to fast forward this so this is already done, so you can, we can move on to the next step. So our uh, next step is how to make uh, straps or belts. So I'm going to go through the tools I'm going to use, and I'll show you how it's done. So the main tool we're going to be using is a strap cutter. So um, these are usable in both the left hand and right hand. They have a lot of measurements along them, so you can work out how thick you want your uh, strap to be. We have a uh, slot punch. So this is a three quarter inch slot punch, which is the size of this hole here. And this is used for buckles. This is a chisel for cutting the ends to make them nice and neat. 
We've got a simple hole punch, and this will be used for uh, attaching rivets. And then we've already seen this one, but this is our edge beveler. So I've got this strap cutter set to three quarter inches because that is the size of this buckle right here that I'm going to be attaching. And I've already got an, a straight edge cut, so this is just done using a knife and a ruler. And you place this on the side and pull back, making sure that it doesn't slip away. And there we have how our belts are cut. I'm going to cut a second one as well, because I'm going to need two pieces. And then pop that to the side. So then we just take our edge beveler from before, same principle, run it along the edge there. Now I'll just smooth it all out. So I'm going to jump now to our next piece. So the next thing I'm going to do on my strap is we're going to attach a buckle to the end of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, neaten up this end, and to do that I have the uh, end punch, which you place over the end, you take a hammer, and it's on the nylon board. So the nylon board is for protecting your tools. And you just strike it like that, what you have is a nice round end. Uh, the next thing is I'm going to take a pencil, and here I've got a little template for making uh, buckle attachments. So it's got a hole, it's got a little slot, and then it's got another hole, because uh, this buckle is going to be riveted on. So I'll start with our slot punch. This goes over the line I've just drawn, making sure it's in the middle, and then just strike it, and you get a nice clean cut slot. And this is just a hole punch, so one hole there, one hole there. So this will also be used for making holes for the buckle prong to go through. But next what we'll do is attach our buckle. So here is our buckle. It goes over like that, prong through the middle, fold it over. And then you take a rivet. So this is the stem of a rivet. Place it through the back, through the front. Place it over the edge of something nice and hard. Um, this is why I use my little anvil here. And then you take your hammer and simply knock it flat. So if you ever need to do any riveting or buckle attachment, that's everything you need to know. Also, if you're doing the holes for your, um, your straps, just measure them out and then use the hole punch from before and just knock all those holes through. So we'll move on to our next step. So, our next step is to actually sew our pouch together. So what I've got here is the thin lever I showed you at the beginning. It's been cut out the same way as the thick lever has, and you can also see it's got the stitch groove running around the outside, and this is so we can um, easily mark where our stitches are going to go. So for this, there'll be two tools we'll be using. There'll be a pricking iron and a needle and thread. So this is a number six pricking iron. And to protect our pricking iron from being damaged, I'm going to put a nylon board down. And then all we do is take our piece, grab a hammer, and line it up on that line. And it's just a case of striking it through. And what you'll find is holes go all the way through, and this makes it nice and neat. You can handle if you want to, but I find this way uh, works a lot better, and it's a lot quicker and easier. It makes very nice, neat stitches. So, uh, when you've got all your holes done, you can see they go all the way round the outside. The next thing to do is actually sew the pieces together. So, what I have here uh, is a big reel of, uh, it's called nylon thread, uh, it's nylon bonded thread. And you can get this online from various places. And usually I take just over an arm's length, because I hand stitch, so you can only go as far as your arm goes. And then this is a saddler's needle. So saddler's needles are blunt, they don't have a point on them which means they don't scratch the leather when you come to sew things. So all I'm going to do is take my needle and thread, and the first thing I'm going to do is tie on. So I start on the back, and I'm doing a little hem around this edge. So I'm going to go through that hole and through that hole there. Hopefully you can see. And just wiggle it through. Sometimes they can be a little bit tricky. There we go. 
and then pull it away and then go back through on yourself because you want to tie off at the beginning and I found the best way for me is to just loop it around a bunch of times and as you're using nylon thread when you've finished sewing you can take a lighter and melt the ends so it's just a case of going through like that and all I'm going to do is essentially a running stitch all the way along so like that and then back through and pull it nice and tight so the main thing is to keep it tight some people use two needles but I prefer using one so I go all the way along in one direction and then I sew all the way back ending up back here where we started and I just take a lighter and melt them together so I'm going to get this all sewn up so you can see the uh, finished thing and then we'll do our final processes. So after many hours of sewing, um, this one is now ready for dyeing. So as you can see, I have added a strap on here that was cut out with the strap cutter that we saw when the buckle was done. There's the buckle um, and you can see this is now folded over and sewn along this edge. And we have our stitches here are actually on the inside because I sewed it right way round and then turned it inside out which is also why this buckle was attached beforehand. So what I'm doing next is I'm going to be dyeing this and there are several methods for dyeing but the one I'm using today is dip dyeing and the kind of dye I use is a water-based dye. So this is a dark brown uh, leather dye, you buy it in a bottle, you can get it online. Uh, this particular brand is Fibbings, uh, it's particularly good because you can mix water with it to make different shades of brown especially if you buy the dark colours. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to dip this in and that'll, that'll be it for dyeing. Then you have to leave it to dry. So I've got somewhere set up to hang this one to make sure it doesn't drip on anything. And what I've got is a pair of tongs. So I can put this in without getting my hands too dirty because um, it will stain your skin. Other methods include things like using a sponge or you can also uh, airbrush if you have an airbrush available. But today I'm going to go with the really easy one, which is dipping it in a big container. So, there we go. And the main bit I want to dye on this is all the vegetable tan pieces, because the pre-dyed leather will actually not dye very much at all, but any edges we've cut will. So I'm just going to turn it over, make sure it's all got on the inside properly. And then... It's a case of getting it out. So if I grab it this way, just want to make sure it doesn't pour liquid everywhere. And there we have it. It's a nice shade of brown. I'm going to hang this up. Uh, but this particular method is really good so you don't get any streaks or any drips and things. So I'll rub this over with a bit of cloth and just hang it up and that'll be it. Uh, by tomorrow it should be dry and ready for polishing, which will be the next step. So we're now on to our final step. So here's the pouch. Uh, this was left overnight to dry. So it's now all nice and dry now. And what we're going to do is polish it. So to polish it, I'll be using Carnaba Cream, which leaves a nice kind of satin finish. So it's not too flat. It's not too glossy. I've also got a piece of rag and a polishing brush. So all I'm going to do is take some of my Carnaba Cream and place it on my rag. And I just use that to rub it in. And I want to make sure I get all the edges. And I'm only going to be doing the uh, vegetable tan part. So the pre-dyed leather, the chrome tan that we used earlier, um, has already got a finish on it, so it doesn't need anything extra. Whereas the vegetable tan, after dyeing, it does feel a little bit tough. It's not as soft. So this just helps feed it. Uh, you can use other things as well. So you can use um, like shoe polishes and things if you want to. So the next thing I do is I just take my polishing brush and buff it up. Making sure, again, get all those little edges. I'll put a little bit more on the back here. It's just a case of feeding it until you're happy. Make sure 
we get some down here. And the Carnival Cream you can find online from various retailers. But like I say, if you want, you can just use standard shoe polish as well. And there we have it. That is our finished pouch. All we have to do is buckle it up. And there we go. So hopefully you've learned lots of things uh, from watching this video. And all the skills I taught you today should be a good start for any kind of leather project you want to. You might not necessarily want to make pouches, you might want to make other things. But if you go back through, I'm sure you can adapt those skills to work on other projects. So thanks for watching.